Okay. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Um, welcome back to tea and coffee with <laughs> Rafael and Lisa. Um, so this is uh, the first time both of you are doing a panel. Um, I suppose everybody knows this by now, but you're actually friends. You went to school uh, 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 before yeah, high school, uh, and you also auditioned for the same part. No, actually, you auditioned for. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can talk. <laughs> you can talk. No. Hi. Yeah. Not at first. Um, I went to audition for the Nova part, uh, and Rachel was going for uh, the Eva part, and we practiced together actually because uh, you were really excited. <laughs> um, but then, um, yeah, they wanted me to try as uh, Eva as well, and uh, I guess that felt more right because. Uh, when I see Josefina do the Nuva part now, I'm like, wow, this is really good. <laughs> uh, yeah? Yeah, so, uh, so what I was going to ask you, both of you actually, uh, because I don't think we talk enough about Eva. Uh, Eva. Uh, and uh, she's a really good character. And I think uh, you just started with her for a reason, but uh, I'm not sure what that is. What do you think? Why do you think uh, Eva was the first one out? Um, I think uh, Eva had a really rough start uh, at high school mm, because uh, of the past with the journals and everything, but we did not uh, at the beginning. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think starting at high school can be really difficult when you don't know anyone, and uh, I really think uh, Eva had to tell that story, um, which is like a really good start, starting with something new, how to make new friends. And I had just been <coughs> in that phase uh, myself, and I guess many people have felt that uh, during their life. Um, so I guess it maybe was a good start to like, oh, this is new, this is how should I get some new friends. Um, yeah, if that makes yeah. sense. Because you moved from uh, yeah. from uh, Bergen, which is on the other side of yeah. uh, Norway, uh, you probably heard that uh, Lisa <laughs> has uh, she pronounces Senura. Nura. <laughs> <laughs> the R is a bit different. Actually, when I went to the audition, um, they asked me if I could uh, speak like the Oslo dialect. And I said, I don't know if it was a sentence or a word, and they just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I moved to uh, Oslo when I was 16 uh, to go to high school here, because we go uh, at the dance uh, line, in the academy, yeah, uh, where you can search uh, or apply uh, from all over Norway and go to high school. Yeah. So I moved there. Mm. And they actually, uh, they, Julia actually rewrote the character so that she was from Bergen. Yeah. And not Oslo. That's. Yeah. You did something, right? Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, but you, at, at the point, you both read for uh, Eva. Uh, and what did you think about the character when you first met her? I was actually a bit more in the Nuga set in the beginning, and I didn't really know how to like uh, prepare uh, for to because that was the first edition we did for a character. Other editions we did different things. Um, so I actually wrote down in the book uh, more about uh, Nuga. Um, so and then they wanted me to do Eva, so I was a bit like Rachel, <laughs> <laughs> um, trying to help me a bit. Um, but I, I feel, um, I can actually recognize myself a bit in uh, Eva because I'm usually a bit shy and um, I guess in the first season she was a bit shy but she's actually not. So I remember when I did season two, uh, my family was like, oh you look, you seem just like uh, Eva. And I was like, really, she's drunk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't be like, oh, and funny and stuff. 
if I am very comfortable, but if not, I'm a bit like, oh. So I guess um, I felt uh, that a bit uh, with Eva that, oh, a bit unsure about things, but needing space to figure it out yourself. Um, yeah, and I really like to be alone uh, and just sit for myself and think a bit. Um, and I guess I was really wanting to have friends, but also needing some space to be like, who am I and what do I actually want and not um, should do everything that people say you should do, kind of. Yeah. What did you think about it? <laughs> um, no, I was just, I was just, um, is it on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was just uh, wondering because, because as uh, Lisa said, she was uh, auditioning for uh, Nora, and I was auditioning for Eva, and and we were sitting together writing about each one of our characters. And I think um, I was I was more kind of into the fact that Eva didn't have that many friends. She had she had her boyfriend and she had Lisa. But she was kind of alone, and and trying to not let that affect her. So that was kind of what I was interested in, and interested in that character that she was um, actually kind of alone, but didn't want to realize it. Um, yeah, and and I'm not sure. I don't think that I would have interpreted her as shy as you would. Um, but more like, um, yeah, I felt like she was unsure about herself, um, but also just really wanted nobody to know. Yeah. <laughs> so you see that in season two, she, uh, you get the real life. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually, uh, you helped each other really for the parts, and you helped uh, Rafael with uh, Eva, and you helped uh, Lisa with for Nora. That's what you think. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, Rafi, what do you think your Eva would be like? Oh, um, I think she would be uh, really different. I remember that we were also told to kind of uh, write or reflect on um, how, how their families are, and I've understood that uh, Julia doesn't actually uh, like families that much, <laughs> so uh, that's why she's not that interested in portraying family life. <laughs> but um, I remember my Eva; she she was a lonely uh, child, um, but she had both uh, a mom and a dad. Um, and her mom was, I think, I chose that the mom was a nurse and the father was a lawyer. I don't know why. <laughs> so I, I don't think like um, maybe all the sneaking around the house that Eva did didn't actually maybe fit in my imagination. Um, but I think my Eva would have, of course, she would have uh, spoken Uso <laughs> dialect, <laughs> not different version. <laughs> um, but I, I'm not sure if she would have been like that. Outgoing, maybe? I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, and also, uh, because uh, Lisa, you're very, very uh, skilled at crying. on the wall and I was we were trying to make me cry a little bit there but then we just dropped it and after that I was like oh I need to learn how to cry <laughs> so um, I actually googled it and then I went to YouTube or something and searched how to cry and it was like to just stare or just have your eyes open until it hurts because it really hurts and then you get like a lot of water and when you start to blink uh, you start to cry, so it was actually like crying with the eye, and then you have to, of course, have all these feelings. Um, but th that was actually what um, helped me a lot, um, just 
to start crying and after just having the pain in the eye and you know you're, you're tired or have a bad day you're just it just <laughs> kept on going for a long time <laughs> um but um so yeah i did actually uh, i did cry um but now when i did the, the baku movie i uh, i got the, the pain in my eye which really hurt as well <laughs> but i didn't complain it was more like on the outside like the cream and stuff it, yeah it gets a bit blind kind of I, I I of course went to to Lisa um because in the last in the last film with the Lena Netflix, Lynn was also supposed to cry but I couldn't do it. But I, I remember when I got the script I went to Lisa like how how do you actually start to cry on camera? What do you do? So I tried the staring thing and it didn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> so we would have gotten uh, an Eva that would be crying Maybe less. Not. Cry that much. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, maybe maybe I, I would have become as good as you were. <laughs> but really good at staring. Yeah, really good at staring. <laughs> or maybe I would just have to picture something really sad. I don't know. But you got really, really good at looking tired. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you do that? Because you're obviously uh, far uh, away from Lynn when we meet you in real life. So, how did you find your inner Lynn? I struggled a lot with finding my inner Lynn. And I, I think I used at least uh, half a year, almost all the season two, to find my Lynn. Because I was like, I don't know how to do this. And okay, I'm supposed to be lazy. And it was uh, difficult for me to be that lazy. And I remember every time I was uh, shooting, Julia said to me, um, Lynn, we need you to be more lazy. Uh, how am I supposed to be more lazy if I'm more lazy now? Then I would be dead. I would be no more lazy. <laughs> but but then I kind of started to feel like okay, now I started to find my laziness. So I I kind of feel like I have a switch in my brain, so I could just like turn on my lean face, which I think is just like relaxing every muscle I have in my face. <laughs> Not laughing at what uh, Carl Martin would say. So then I, I also made a technique to kind of bite myself um, in, on the inside of my mouth because otherwise I would kind of start to smile and I couldn't do that. So I kind of have to just relax every, every face muscle you have. <laughs> are, are there any scenes in the, in the, in the show we can, where you can see your biting your? I don't. I don't know. I think um, I can see it because I know that I did it in the um, in the scene um, with the fifty <laughs> um, uh, where uh, Nura is really, really upset and she's um, in the refrigerator and in the kitchen at the collective. Uh, and there, I was really struggling to keep my. So, so I know. That I was biting my lip, so I think I can see it, <laughs> but I'm not sure if anybody else can see it. <laughs> what would your uh, Lynn look like? Lisa? What would your Lynn look like? Oh, oh, I've never <laughs> had that question before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think I am a little bit Lynn sometimes uh, when I'm home from school because it's uh, very active working with the body at school, so when I'm home, I'm actually just chilling on the sofa and watching TV. Um, so I think I it's, I have a Lynn in me, kind of, but it's just maybe not so uh, aware of it, so I think I just had to bring uh, my sofa Lisa mm -hmm. and, and just... Can you, can you show us? <laughs> Could you just try to uh, not use any? Yeah, any. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as I said, uh, already in uh, 18 months, and uh, Scum, uh, Scum's legacy still lives on. Um, what is the most important message that you've taken away from Scum, either being in the show or just the show in itself? The most important message. What, what do you think? Well, how has it? Uh, 
change your life. Uh, and not, not necessarily changed in an uh, outward sense, but your view on life. I think, like I said, the, uh, at first it was just like, oh yes, I got a job, kind of. Um, and then it became so much more. Uh, I think because of the first season, it didn't really like, it, it started getting a little bit big at the end, um, but it was more like in season two. And I think I really realized when you get to know how much it means to people, it started meaning also a lot more to me uh, to play the part, uh, which was kind of uh, touching. Um, so of course it changed my life in many ways, but it also kind of changed my perspective uh, on what I, I did, that it felt very important to do it. And um, I also felt that, um, of course, maybe not this time because I just see myself and I see my friends kind of, uh, but. When I watch other TV shows and movies uh, that really helped me uh, during my uh, life, it was very nice to could be a person who could help others. And yeah, that's pretty big. Yeah, and I, I think that um, for me it was so nice that that we had this opportunity to kind of um, show all kinds of different lives and all kinds of different people and kind of also send out the message that everybody everybody is dealing with something and everybody has their ups and downs um, which for me was great and that's what I like the most about Scum is that it kind of shows the more real life and not in a Hollywood kind of way yeah. and, I'm, and I'm also really glad that Flynn was a part of that because I, I think it's so important to have those lean days and allow yourself to not be on top all the time and and also just be able to show that it's normal. It, it's normal to go and just want to be on the couch and it's normal to just want to be alone and, and everybody's dealing with life in their own way. Yeah. And also seeing that, uh, you know, the, everyone knows this uh, sleeping person on the couch. Yeah. And to see that she also has an uh, inner life and uh, is a complex character and a person uh, in her own life. Yeah, Which is sometimes uh, easy to forget that everyone is someone. I think that everybody knows that kind of person who just wants to be on the sofa. Um, and every uh, collective has that kind of person who's just like washing the bathroom a bit a bit uh, badder than mm -hmm. everybody else <laughs> and being sloppy and forgetting all her stuff. Um, but, but as I said, that I think it's also important, at least for me, to also show that you have to, even though you're not a lean, kind of person, I think that you have to be able to allow yourself to have the lean kind of days. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, we we'll jump somewhere. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so we're more or less talking about role models and the characters of uh, from Scum being role models even, or maybe because they are allowed to be flawed and full human beings. So how important do you think that role models like that are for people, young girls or young people uh, all over? Um, I think um, when you're young and it's a bit hard to know what's normal and you get kind of told how things should be and not always. So um, I would say a bit confused and I think um, even in the series I learned uh, a lot about that this is normal kind of. Um, oh, I don't know really where I'm going with this. <laughs> um, 
Can you help me with this there? Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I'm not sure, because I've, I've never actually thought of myself being, being a role model, and I've never thought that, oh, I get affected by the role models. But you do, and of course I was, as I was young. And I think it's just really, really, really important to to be able to have a variety of different yes. role models. And I think that's what good would come, is that they have all of these different kinds of role models, so everybody can kind of pick and choose and have um, somebody who feels like, oh, this is the right one for me, or I can learn something from this character and this character. Um, and, and I think it's it's really important, as you said, because cause you, you don't know who you are, and I don't know who I am now, and I don't know if I ever will know like who I am Rachel and uh, Rafi. Um, uh, so, I mean, you kind of need to, you need to have somebody to follow and somebody who's guiding you, and yeah. It's uh, also very nice to show uh, um, it's okay to be vulnerable and have problems and talk about them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's okay to cry. Yeah. It's okay to <laughs> sleep <laughs> on the couch. It's okay to be, yeah. be bad at washing the bathroom. And it's okay to eat cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> and and be lonely. And, and, and yeah, and to have that role model who's lonely but also kind of knows how to um not kind of go deep down in the mud of their own mind i'm not sure if that necessarily made any sense <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh, uh, there there is hope and there's a way out yeah. very good <laughs> who are your role models oh uh that's that's very. Uh, can I can I answer? Yeah. Um, cause now this will be kind of cliche, oh. but um, I actually think you're kind of my role model. Aww. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> um, cause Lisa is really good at just uh, knowing what she wants to do, and then you do them. <laughs> really. <laughs> something you like, uh, you have to learn. Mm. So that's maybe an, 
good thing. Yeah, and I also feel very, very many times I can get frustrated about a thing and I go in my own head and I'm like, oh, I'm, this sucks and I'm so angry about it. And then I say it loud to a friend, not to make like, uh, uh, something you know, like, um, uh, the, uh, to uh, make it the bad, bad atmosphere. Yeah. Bad atmosphere, yeah. not to make it a bad atmosphere, but just like, oh, that really sucks. And then the they're really sharing. Yeah, and then the person says, Oh, I didn't experience that at all. I experienced it like that, and I'm like, oh, okay. That sometimes it's really good to share what you have in your head to get another perspective of it, and you can learn a lot from that. Yeah. So yeah, many role models. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Actually.